In this video, we're going to take a look at the second API lab on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Finding and Exploiting an Unused API Endpoint. As usual, we'll start by going through the background information that's specific to this lab. If you want to skip straight to it, you can use the chapter at the bottom of the video. You can gather a lot of information by browsing applications that use the API. This is often worth doing even if you have access to API documentation, as sometimes documentation may be inaccurate or out of date. You can use Burp Scanner to crawl the application and then manually investigate interest in the attack surface using Burp's browser. While browsing the application, look for patterns that suggest API endpoints in the URL structure, such as slash API. Also look for JavaScript files. These can contain references to API endpoints that you haven't triggered directly via the web browser. Burp Scanner automatically extracts some endpoints during crawls, but for a more heavyweight extraction, you can use the JS Link Finder app, which is available in the Burp App Store. You can also manually review JavaScript files in Burp. Once you've identified API endpoints, interact with them using a the Burp repeater and intruder. This enables you to observe API's behavior and discover additional attack surface. For example, you can investigate how the API responds to changing the HTTP method and the media type. As you interact with the API endpoints, review error messages and other responses closely. Sometimes these include information that you can use to construct a valid HTTP request. The HTTP method specifies the action to be performed on a resource. For example, get will retrieve the data from a resource, patch will apply partial changes to resource, and options will retrieve information on the types of requests that can be used on a resource. An API endpoint may support different HTTP methods. It's therefore important to test all potential methods when you're investigating API endpoints. This may enable you to identify additional endpoint functionality, opening up more attack surface. For example, the endpoint slash API slash tasks may support the following methods. Get might retrieve a list of tasks, whereas post will create a new task and delete will delete a task. You can use the built-in HTTP verbs list in Burp Intruder to automatically cycle through a range of these methods. Note that when testing different HTTP methods, you should target low priority objects. This helps make sure that you avoid unintended consequences, for example, altering critical items or creating excessive records. API endpoints often expect data in a specific format. They may therefore behave differently depending on the content type of the data provided in the request. Changing the content type may enable you to trigger errors that disclose useful information, bypass flawed defenses, take advantage of differences in processing logic. So for example, an API may be secure when handling JSON data, but susceptible to injection attacks when dealing with XML. To change the content type, we can modify the content type header and then reformat the request body or we can use the Content Type Converter app to automatically convert data submitted between XML and JSON. Once you've identified some initial API endpoints, you can fuzz to uncover hidden endpoints. For example, consider a scenario where you've identified the following API endpoint for updating user information, and that is a put request to API slash user slash update. To identify hidden endpoints, we could use a Burp Intruder to fuzz other resources with the same structure. For example, we could fuzz the update position of the path with a list of common functions, maybe delete and add. And when fuzzing, we should use word lists based on common API naming conventions and industry terms. Make sure that you also include terms that are relevant to the application based on your initial recon. So now we've covered the theory, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, to solve the lab, exploit a hidden API endpoint to buy a lightweight leet leather jacket. And then we're given some credentials to log in with. We're told the required knowledge, which we should know by now. So let's open up the lab. See, let's have a look to see if we've got the docs. And I'm not expecting this to work because that was the solution to the previous challenge. But I think it's a good idea just to get used to the methodology and to try things, even if we know they're not likely to work. It's good just to get in the routine of knowing that these are the things that you need to look at. So. We try each of these, open api.json, and they all come back not found. So let's go and take a look at the functionality. And we'll go straight to our lightweight leet leather jacket. And as usual, we can go to Burt Repeater and see is there any API call that is. We can see that we've got this API slash product slash one slash price. Okay, cool. Let's go down and see if we've got any more functionality. We do. Let's add it to the cart. And if we go back to our Burp suite again, this time we'll see that we've also got Okay, actually the post request was just two carts, so that didn't go to the API, but we've still got these two API requests for the price. Okay, so let's send this to the repeater, and we'll just go and see if we can play around with this. The first thing we might want to do is change this to options and just see what options we've got available. 
and it says method not allowed, but it does tell us that the methods that are allowed are get and patch. We already did the get, so let's try and do the patch. Click send, and we get unauthorized. Okay, so let's go and try and log in. We were given some credentials, we didn't use them, so let's use them now. We log in, we can also update our email. Let's just do this and see, does it trigger any more API calls or any other endpoints? Well, it doesn't, and in this case, we are looking to change the price of the lightweight leather jacket, so you wouldn't really expect it to. So what I'll do is I'll go to the proxy, and we've logged in now, so let's take a look at our new session cookie. I'll take a copy of it and then just paste it into the repeater. Click send, and this time we get a new error. It says only application slash JSON content type is supported. So actually there's no content type specified at the moment. Remember we have the option to use an extension to change this, but I don't think I've got the extension installed. You've also got this change body encoding, but that doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, let's just change, let's just add this manually. I'll just put in here that the content type is application slash JSON. And if we click send, it's going to say it's an error because we didn't give it a JSON body. Send again. And now it's telling us that the price parameter is missing. So let's just do what we need to do. Put in the price and we'll change the price to zero and then click send. And there we go. It came back to say the price is now zero. So let's go to our cart. It's still at 1337. So let's remove it. We'll go back to the home page and it's now showing zero. So let's try and add it. Go to the cart and then there we go. That's all looking good. Let's just place the order and we have solved the lab. And that's it. In this video, we've looked at how we can find and exploit an unused API endpoint. In the next video, we'll look at the final API testing lab, which is exploiting a mass assignment vulnerability. As usual, let me just recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to find some API vulnerabilities and get paid for it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.